Transmission of the virus that causes COVID is a continuous risk. It is not just a matter of high or low risk workplaces, but something that can occur in any of the places we pass through during the day. From our journey to work, to the meeting room, to the places we eat, drink and socialize. In each place, the relative risk of transmission via the three main routes, person to person at close range, through the air at longer range, and indirectly via surfaces, varies depending on three sets of factors, the physical environment, the behavior of people in it, and the characteristics of the virus. We know from research on the PROTECT National Core Study that close contacts of infected people are most at risk because of the high concentration of virus-carrying respiratory particles that can be inhaled at short range. The risk of infection varies depending on how much virus is being emitted and the immunity levels of those exposed, but increases with the duration of exposure. However, smaller particles can also travel through the air to cause infection at longer ranges, especially in enclosed and poorly ventilated spaces, where they can linger and build up the concentration of infectious virus. Surface transmission, while unlikely to be the main route of exposure, is possible. Our real-world outbreak investigations have not found any live virus in these environments, but we have detected signs that the virus has been present on surfaces in high traffic areas, such as canteens and changing rooms, that may not get as much cleaning attention as the main office space or factory floor. Our laboratory studies have shown the ability of the virus to infect people reduces as it dries, so recently touched surfaces may still pose a transmission risk. The variable degree to which individuals are exposed to these risks over the course of the day influences the chance of them carrying an infection into the workplace and helps explain why workplaces of the same type can see very different COVID-19 outbreak rates. However, we also know from PROTECT research which controls are effective at reducing transmission in different scenarios. Our computer modelling suggests regular lateral flow testing of workers could reduce transmission in an office environment by up to 40%. Another modelling technique, computational fluid dynamics, shows us that although screens have some effect at blocking close-range transmission during short interactions, they do not prevent transmission via smaller airborne droplets that can float around them. To prevent this and the other routes of transmission, properly worn face coverings are one of the most effective controls, stopping a high proportion of virus-carrying particles being emitted at source. Effectiveness varies by type, but our experiments have found commonly available surgical face masks and cloth coverings to be effective at reducing aerosol and droplet emission. Meanwhile, improving ventilation, whether by opening windows or employing mechanical systems that bring in fresh air rather than recirculating it, is very important to prevent the build-up of virus-carrying particles that mix into the air. Our experiments and computer models also show that air cleaning devices using filters or UVC can be effective at reducing the amount of virus that may be in the air. Maintaining cleaning and hygiene standards is a worthwhile precaution against the possibilities of surface transmission, as well as having beneficial side effects for the reduction of other infections. Managing occupancy can be very effective for reducing all routes of transmission. Spaces with fewer people in them reduces the chance of an infected person being in the space and can also minimise the size of an outbreak if transmission does happen. This also helps with physical distancing, which reduces the risk of close-range, person-to-person transmission. It is important to carry out a risk assessment to work out the combination of controls which will have the biggest impact in reducing transmission in a specific situation. This should consider how each transmission route is relevant in each situation.
and therefore which control measures are most relevant and proportionate. By applying these measures as necessary, we can successfully and sustainably limit transmission of the virus, which causes COVID, helping to keep ourselves and others healthy and safe.